So, um, good morning everybody. A very warm uh, welcome to this uh, course. Um, it's really uh, a very important course, a very important uh, step uh, in your life um, to attend this course. You will see that many things, that in a way there is nothing new, but in a way there are plenty of things that are new. And this course is for, as it's uh, stated in the different uh, leaflets and for formats, this course is meant for Christian adults and by that I mean people who hopefully uh, are taking their uh, Christian life with, uh, I would say, a certain sense of commitment and responsibility. Um, because this course conveys not only knowledge but as well practical knowledge and this practical knowledge helps you to implement a more fervent, more committed spiritual life and of course this normally triggers a, f um, a, triggers a growth, uh, a powerful growth. Of course, having said that, it doesn't mean that you never had any journey before here, on the contrary, otherwise you wouldn't be here uh, if you hadn't already tasted uh, many things about a spiritual life, as you would certainly not be here. But you will see it adds things. Um, as, as well, another advice just before we start, we will start with a prayer. Just another advice, as you notice, this course is recorded. One of the purposes of the recording is to make it available for you in the future. In, the, in this sense, you don't have to spend all your time stressed writing down and wanting to accumulate the maximum of information uh, that I'm giving. You can come back to it uh, online uh, for your personal and private uh, use and uh, you can have the videos and watch them. In saying that, I mean that it's better to live this course this moment as a unique moment. Today is unique. You might hear the same thing, but hear it in a different way another day. But today, God wants to speak to you. So try to live it in a recollected way, almost, I would say, like in a retreat, even though there is some, a little bit of interaction the first two hours, but then after, you, you won't interact. So don't worry, uh, you won't be submitted uh, uh, to questions and uh, things like the, the first hour I, I need a little bit of uh, your collaboration but don't worry it's always uh, I respect always your your um, your will if you don't wish to to speak that's absolutely fine okay so um, try to live that moment as a retreat as as a moment where God speaks to you of course jot down whatever you feel is important you want to remember but in case you want to listen to it again, it's, it's recorded, okay? So, let us uh, start by uh, a prayer to n ask for the help of the Lord and um, because we need, we need that help. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence uh, of the Lord. the presence of the Father, of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady. Let us open our hearts to the love of Jesus. Let us entrust Him all our burdens, worries, concerns, everything, put it in His hands, or even better, in Mary's hands, so we are free to run toward Jesus. With the spirit of little children, we ask you, O oh Lord, graciously to give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. 
Give us your light. Give us the understanding and knowledge. Give us discernment. Incline our will to your will. And guide us, we ask you, this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, during the break, the coming break, we'll have um, like three sessions uh, in the morning, two, maybe three uh, in the afternoon. Um, during the break, I'll bring the syllabus of the course. I'll mention it a little bit now and then after, uh, explaining a little bit why and how, and then we will enter in the course itself. Um, you have with you the summary of the uh, today's topics. Um, as you see, there are two parts in the sheet you have here. There are two parts. One part in the morning, which uh, will address the first topic ever, uh, the most important topic that will be our drive throughout uh, any spiritual formation here or any other place, which is setting the goal, understanding the goal of our spiritual life, the goal of our Christian life. Please, could you put all your phones off and uh, off or silent uh, or non-vibrating, please. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, so, goal, goal of spiritual life and stages of spiritual life. Hmm? Stages of spiritual life. We will see that uh, this morning. Then, in the afternoon, if we finish earlier on, I go with your rhythm. I don't go with my speed, I try to go with your speed. So if we finish early, then we start early the second part, because the second part is very abundant as well. So it doesn't harm to take more time with the second part. The second part is on Our Lady. I will explain why, starting to talk about Our Lady at that junction. You will notice that we will be talking about Jesus, about God in the first one, of course. But Our Lady in her relationship with Jesus and Our Lady with her relationship with each one of us, clarifying different uh, concepts. Okay? Now, this course, as you probably know, as it is stated here in the leaflet, if you don't have it, please grab one. Um, later on, you can have it. This course has three parts. Each part is more or less uh, two to three days. The first part here is three days, then the second part after Easter is, is two days, and then in June you have three days. The first part right now is uh, bring, lays the foundations of our spiritual life, and then we'll very rapidly shift and move on to focus on Lexio Divina, which would be the implementation of the first part of the Mass, the first part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Word. How can we digest, ingest, and then digest and assimilate the Word of God? So that's, if you want, so the, the, the main, the, these are the main, topic, the, the main topics here will be uh, Lexio. But you have the foundations first. So today and the first part of next Saturday will be laying the foundations of, of spiritual life, okay? Then the second part will address the general laws of spiritual life or the theological life. How does it work? How do I deal on a daily basis with God? How I connect with God? So we will be addressing faith, hope and, and charity. Uh, the acts will be addressing uh, temptations, ups and downs in spiritual life and Christ in spiritual life and the Holy Spirit in, in spiritual life. So these are two very, very dense, intense um, um, days. Then in June, we will have the third part, which is the prayer of the heart. Bear in mind that you can attend any part separately and then resume uh, in a future moment where you will have the course, that's course repeated again, then you can catch up and have the other part. Or if you want, then you subscribe, you can have all the videos if you can't come. If any day 
If you can come, I don't know, seven days and you can't come the eighth, well, you can always have the videos, that, that's absolutely fine, okay? The third, as I said, is on the prayer of the heart, one of the, the most important uh, parts of our, uh, of our spiritual life, and it's, in a way, the implementation of the second part of the Mass. So we will have the two parts of the Mass, the liturgy of the Word, how to digest the Word of God, and the liturgy of the Eucharist, when we receive the Eucharist, how does it become life in us? So we will be studying um, contemplative prayer, silent prayer, um, uh, which is a, a little very close to adoration and very di directly linked to the Eucharist, to the moment of communion when we receive the Lord. How could we remain united with Him? These two prayers, the Lectio Divina on one side and the Prayer of the Heart, are really the two legs that help us run in the journey of spiritual life and boost it very powerfully. But they are together. We can't separate them. Sometimes we do focus on Lectio, sometimes we do focus on the prayer of the heart, but I think the two parts of the Mass go together. I cannot just eat Jesus and forget what he said to me or remember what he said to me and forget about eating him. So they, they go together, as the Lord says. Whoever loves me keeps my commandments. So listening to the, uh, to the word of God and the Father will love him and, love him and we will come and dwell in him. So that coming and dwelling is the prayer of the heart. So we need two aspects, okay? So this is just for a general idea of the, uh, the, the course. The course is meant, as I said, to um, boost spiritual life. If it is implemented uh, normally, of course with prudence, always prudence in these, uh, in these things, if it is implemented properly, normally it will boost your spiritual life. But of course, all this has to always to be done with prudence. Prudence means um, uh, advice from a spiritual director, uh, advice from somebody who understands these things in order uh, not to sort of, you know, when we don't know, we don't know. We need to um, have some advice from people who have a little bit more uh, knowledge and experience and wisdom uh, in, in, in this field, okay? And never, please feel free to always um, ask me or certainly uh, many other people who know about uh, these things. Now, I think that's, that was uh, the, for the introduction, general introduction for the course, so let us now start with the uh, first part um, of the course. So, you can focus on the uh, this uh, sheet, the first one, it gives you the titles. We, as you see here, we will have six points to address, uh, hopefully, uh, this morning, and maybe more uh, if we finish early. Mm? The first point will be uh, studying what is the goal and, uh, of our uh, sp spiritual life, Christian life. We will try to clarify it. This course brings, hopefully, a lot of clarity and precision. Clarity of precision. Often we, we start our spiritual life like amateurs, no? people who really don't know exactly how to do it. No? Uh, hopefully we will shift a little bit closer to professional instead of amateur. You know? um, it's important because spiritual life is vital. So you can't afford in your life to be amateur in something that is so deci decisive for the rest of your eternity. So more attention, more clarity, more precision are needed. Okay? So we'll clarify the goal. Then, um, number two, we will uh, start to see where can we put union with Jesus on the line of transformation. Of course, you can't understand what, exactly what it means, number two, and the rest. Uh, you, this is why usually I don't give the outline of the first lesson. Uh, it unfolds uh, with a bit of patience from your, from your end, uh, step by step. But, you know, here I'm giving it for first time beforehand. Mm. Where in the Bible we see that, uh, and then the second goal. All this is very mysterious for you, the first four points. Then the fifth will be the stages of growth of a spiritual life. You have all the stages here stated in front of you, but we will develop that a little bit. And then a conclusion about uh, the meaning of um, 
having the, our goals clear and set up, uh, how it can influence um, our act of, of hope. Then you'll have the readings, we will see that together, okay? So, try to relax now, forget a little bit about the outline, uh, try to be entirely uh, with me here. I will start with the first question and feel free to answer, uh, but it's better to think, it's better to think before answering, hmm? always, in, in, in these matters. So, the first question is, is the following. Sorry. With your own words, at this junction in your life, what is, what do you think is the goal of our life? Our Christian life, our spiritual life. So the question now is the goal. And as you see, I put the three things together. I don't really make a difference. You might make a difference, but I'm not doing, uh, making a difference. So what is the goal of our life? The goal of our Christian life. Or our spiritual life. For me they are the same, but maybe for you they are not. I don't mind. I'm happy to listen to your point of view. So what do you think is, the, why are we here on earth? What is the purpose? You see, the purpose is very important. When you start something, you ask, well, what is your purpose here? What is your goal? And if the goal is not clear, then there is a bit of a problem here. This is why it's very important to clarify the, um, the, um, the goal. So could you tell me, of course people who haven't attended the course are invited to answer because otherwise it really mixes the cards and it's not nice. So what do you think, sincerely, according with your own words, I'm, I'm not here to judge you, even though I, we will weigh the words and try to understand them, but I'm not here to judge you. We are here together as one family, uh, followers of Jesus, and we want to grow. We want to follow Jesus. Jesus is here with us, and Our Lady, of course. So, what do you think is, your, is, the, is the goal of life, Christian life, spiritual life? How, how would you word it for yourself? What is my goal? Why am I here on earth? What is my hope? What is the end? But pe people sometimes give me the, the, mid, the mid answer, no? like uh, I would like to, things in the middle. My question is in the end. What do you want to see achieved? Even if it is big, if, even if the answer is very big, I mean audacious, I don't mind, but I want to you to focus on that. Where are you going? You are in a train, the train of life, the train of the church, the train of your spiritual life, and the train is running at uh, 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour or more, I don't know. Uh, how is your train running uh, with other people? So where is this train heading to? Is it going to Liverpool, to Manchester, to Brighton? I don't know, New Haven, I don't know. So what is, what is your answer? Or maybe to Paris, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, by the way, you discover that I'm not English, no? Uh, my, my, uh, my English is not that uh, good, so you, you will bear with me a little bit, no? Uh, you will help me as well. So, shoot. Go ahead, don't, don't fear. You might even give more than one answer. You might give me one and then rethink it and then give me another answer. Yes? Say again. To be in heaven. So let us put heaven there, okay? So I will write the different answers. And then you added eternal life? Yes. 
to have eternal life. Okay. Okay. And since we want more clarity, more precision, can you just give me the same, the same part? Your name again? Nancy. Nancy. Please, Nancy, if you can kindly just give me more details about your, your, your vision, your understanding of eternal life and heaven. Say it, but in another way. So I clarify it, explain it. What is heaven for you, if you prefer? Or what is eternal life for you? Give me another word. Uh, to be in union. Oof, powerful. Union? With? With whom? With eternity. With eternity? With the Trinity. The Trinity. Ah, well, I, I. Okay, so union with the Trinity. So if you don't mind, I'll put a triangle. No offense at all in the... Uh, in the uh, Eastern art, uh, it is allowed to draw a, 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 um, a triangle to mean the Trinity. So there is no offense here because some people say, oh, God is not a triangle. Uh, I know, but uh, it could be depicted this way. Mm? So just to understand that instead of putting Trinity, union with the Trinity. Okay, would you like to add something more about eternal life and heaven? This union, can you... You want to add something, or that's enough? That's fine. Um, is the road to reach that goal is to walk? Not the road. I need the goal. <laughs> that's the thing. The road. The no, I want the goal. The Only road. the goal. I don't know the road. I, <laughs> till now, the road is the door is the road is mysterious. Strangely, I'm first talking about the goal. So, uh, uh, bear with me, eh? bear with me. We will, come, we will come to the road, don't worry. Mm? The stages, which is the second part of the title. But I need just the goal. So, do you want to add something about the goal itself, not the road that leads to the goal? No. Thank you very much, Nancy. Anybody else? I, I felt you were about to, to, to speak, yes. Um, Fulfillment? So you want to reach your fulfillment, your, f your full realization, mm? fulfillment, is that, is that okay? Mm? But uh, uh, fulfillment, if you want to describe that fulfillment, wha what is it exactly? Because for instance, I'm, I'm playing here the devil advocate, no? If you stop a, a person uh, having his or her jogging in the morning and stop them and say, uh, what is your goal in life? They might say, I want to live life, I'm living life to the full, to the fullness. I'm giving it all, I'm really doing this and doing that, I'm having jogging and I have my work and I have my friends, I have my family and my children, etc. So, no, this is what I want. In the light of what God wants us to be, I want to know what God wants us to be. That's my question. What, what God wants us to be? Yeah, but there is, there is a, 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 as, a, as a Christian, uh, we, have, uh, we have some exp explanation of that. Of course we are different, but we still have two ears, two eyes, and one nose, even if you are different. So, what is the common purpose for us? Hmm? Fulfillment. Fulfillment remains, I hope you understand me, fulfillment remains vague. You know, just, just a moment. I'm, I'm digging a little bit <laughs> with... Uh, I like to dig. You, you are a scientific person. So, I need to reach the atom, or even more. And let us remain at the level of the atom, that, that's nicer. So, or the molecules. So, I need to reach to the bottom of what, what does it mean, fulfillment. We are different, yes, but we have a common goal. I hope, I don't know, maybe you, you don't think we have a common goal, I don't know. What is fulfillment? Because you have to fulfill what? To fulfill um, talents, um, faculties, uh, yes, but to reach what? Just a moment. 
Shall I, shall I, shall I release the, the pressure and, and, and come back? Okay. I want the scientific mind here. I think the, the, the gentleman, your name? Your, your name? Thomas. Thomas, yeah, th sorry, I forgot. To become saints, yes, holiness. Saints. Okay, so union, I will put saints here. So holiness or, or sanctity. Good. Can you give me another explanation or develop a little bit what is to be saint for you? We all have, you see, just a moment, you, you see my question. We all have an understanding of holiness. A certain understanding. It is certainly, you will forgive me here, it is certainly vague. The aim is more or less the same, but it's a bit too far to have a minimum of clarity on it. What is a saint for you? So, this is why I come back with a, the with a following question. Define, define sanctity or holiness. Uh, you see, what is to be a saint? Or what, you said the answer is correct, but I want the understanding of the answer. I, I'm, I don't buy just uh, wrapping paper. To become pure. Give me more. You know what? I'm teaching this course from 98, 95 actually. It's the first time somebody gives me this answer. Pure. Uh, yeah, I know, I, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. The first time ever, just a little observation, no? Uh, pure. Uh, I received all sorts of answers, sometimes very weird answers sometimes, no? <laughs> but that's a good answer, and it's, uh, it's, it's spot on, but uh, uh, can, you, can, you, can you give me something more about that purity, that... that yeah, sinless, okay. So, mm, so pure you mean sin. Okay, so no sin. This is negative definition. Give me positive definition. Because you said it's absence of sin. Give me, it's then presence of what? You see, I'm pushing you to think a little bit more about the words we, uh, we constantly use. Because all the answers you will be giving, all the answers you will be giving are answers that we, we know. But do we understand what we mean by it? Yes? Presence of the Holy Spirit. Say again? Presence of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Presence only? <laughs> I'm very naughty the first hour. Think about it. We'll, we'll come back. So, Holy Spirit. So, you said presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody said tr tr unite union with Trinity. Uh, so, Holy Spirit. Uh, but you said presence. So, here this is presence. I want to understand better that presence business. Yes. I was thinking, is it to become the most perfect version of ourselves that we could be as God initially wanted us to be? I think you are somehow close to what, uh, remind you, me your, your name? Mildred. Mildred, what Mildred uh, said. Uh, so let me repeat what you said so people could, could hear it. The most, perfect, the most perfect version of ourselves that God intended for us. That God intended for us. Yes, so you, the notion of, yeah, I, I th I'm sure we all understand what you say, but the perfect version needs this perfection, needs a bit of clarification. You see what I'm trying to say? Hmm? Needs a bit of clarification. Uh, so let me put, if you don't mind, perfection, okay? Because it's, it's a key, I, in my humble view, in my humble view, I think it's a key expression. The most, or most, so the maximum. So there is a maximum here. So uh, perfect, perfect version. So perfection, perfect, perfection. But again, uh, what is the content of that perfection? Grace. Grace, grace what is grace? Grace what? In a sentence. How do you put grace? 
So remember the question, because you, you just arrived, the question is what is the goal of our life, our Christian life, our spiritual life? Why are we here on, on earth? What, what are we pursuing? You, know? you are in a train, remember. I hope that from time to time you ask yourself, where this, is this train going? Because you enter in a routine. Even the church, you go to Mass, it's a, it be, could become a routine. Your prayers be, could become a routine. Your Christian life could become a routine. This means what, in my language? We are in a train. Fine. I'm not saying don't be in a train. Please remain in the train. But do you have any control? Do you, ha do you have any knowledge of where the train is heading? Are you working on it? Or are you just sitting on a comfortable chair, having a nice cup of tea, reading uh, whatever magazine or listening to nice music and, that's, and having nice friends? In the train. There are trains who can provide that. Unification of? Uh, uh, oh yeah, y unification of our will with the will of God. So uh, let me put this. So you said union. I think unification is, is almost more powerful than union. Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, this one, the French one, said that unity is greater than union. Because union, it's union of X and Y, or A and B. But unity means they are one. You used a, 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 a word that is a little bit closer to unity, which is unification. I think, I don't know. It's a of course, yeah, we do all agree there is a journey. I'm saying we're on a train, this means there is a journey. Fine. So, uni union, unity of our will. So, our will. So God's will and our will are in a process. So this is the growth here. It's not. A, I'm not crossing it. It's just a growth. So we want to sort of reach uh, unification, or they became identical, something like that. Okay. Okay. Have you found something with grace or other? Yes, please, go ahead. Um, to carry my cross. To carry my cross, uh, that's a journey. Yes, yeah, it's a journey. To, to this, I'm a journey to become a disciple of Jesus. Disciple of Jesus, yes. To die for Christ. Dying for Christ? Dying for Christ. That's my goal for now. To die for Christ. Wow, that's another unique answer I never heard before. I'll put it even in green. To die for Christ. You mean dying, dying? Yeah. Giving everything? It's yeah. like he's giving you the cross that you love in your question. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because, yeah, dying for Christ, you give everything. It's like here when uh, Thomas uh, said sinless, so you, you left all what is not Christ or you abandoned your will and uh, went toward, uh, chose the, the will of God. So is that, is that in this sense you mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really helps the people to see that even though you have that cross, that you still, you're still able to enrich the others. Yes, but that's the journey. That's the journey. Do we agree? <coughs> that's the journey. I prefer, I prefer to talk... I understand. I, I, I take on board what you say, but let us not go astray from the goal. So you say to die for Christ, is it like the final... The final act is to die for Christ. So you, you are dead in Christ. You, are, you renounce to, to, to everything and you are 
in him. Is this is the way you, you put it? Okay. Um, would you add, like, I don't know, out of love or out of something? No? Yeah, to help in order for you also to, to enlighten to others your life and to be salt of the world. To be salt of this, yeah, of the soil and to enlighten others. Okay? Okay. Okay. Other, one last, one or two more and, uh, and then we will move on. To become love, so yeah, to become love. So yeah, we said union with the Trinity, we can then use another um, expression, which is uh, to become, I would say, transformation, would you agree? Yes. So transformed in love, and when we use love here, you said you mean God, God is love. So the notion here, the key, the key word is become, to become, which here I just translated into transformed, okay? Okay, any last one in case? To be faithful. To be faithful. But that's the journey. That's the journey. Of course, the journey generates the goal, the journey will allow the goal to happen, we agree with that. And, and faithfulness, yeah, it's a sort of a union, okay. Shall we, shall we stop at that junction? And I would like to summarize that. There are other words that could be used, there are other words that could be used, but I would like to focus um, not many, well, you mentioned Christ, but not many mentioned Christ as such. We had here the Holy Spirit, we had here, of course, first the Holy Trinity. Of course, Christ is one of the um, persons of the Holy Trinity. We have God's will, God. Hmm? But what about Christ? Hmm? What about Christ? Can we, can we say that our goal in life is union with Christ? And when we say Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. When we say Christ, we have the Father. Are you with me? Union, unity, transformation, our will and his will, dying for, for him, being pure and saints. Would you agree that it, we could take on board that concept as a summary of all what we tried to explore right now? Because in Christ you have everything. In Christ you have the Father, who sees me, sees the Father who has an experience of me, who knows me, knows the Father. Christ is the one who gives the Holy Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit. Christ is the access to the Trinity. Christ is the mediator. We will see all that uh, in, the, in the future, in the coming lessons. So, don't you... W would you agree with the fact that uh, if we say that the summary of the answer for now, for now, is the union with Christ, okay? Of course, when I say union, uh, I take on board what uh, St. Therese says. Union uh, could be understood uh, in a, even a stronger way, uh, like unity, mm? unity, okay? Now, if I say that my goal is union with Christ and it, and it sort of takes all this, my second question now is the following. You are very well aware that being, having a, a, a goal, being in the train, there are stages 
There is a journey of transformation, a journey of purification, a journey of dying to ourselves, carrying our cross, etc. A journey of transformation, a journey of sanctification. Would you agree with that? If, and please I need all your attention now, if I draw a line And this line is not time only. It's not your age. It's your spiritual age. I can be 60 and still not have met uh, Jesus. I can be 80, 85, 90, not knowing yet Jesus. So on this line, I'm very... F uh, far uh, back, no? Um, um, toward this side. So, age is something and spiritual age is something completely different. So, I want you to focus on the uh, parameter which is transformation or sanctification purification divinization if you want to use the greek father's word divinization divinization this is the expression that the the greek fathers of the church use if you go toward the eastern side of the church you will hear more often that expression we tend on this side of the church to use the word sanctification, which is to become holy. Okay? So this means that we are changing. Something in us is changing. Let me state it from, from the beginning. The old man dies and the new man in us grows. The seed of baptism is growing. If you consider the baptism as a seed and not as... Um, how can I say it? Not as something that is stable, but it's, it's a growth. So baptism could, exactly as Jesus uh, compares it, no? he said, how can I compare the, the kingdom of God? He said, the kingdom of God, which is what? Kingdom of God. The presence of God in me. This interaction with, with God. So how can I compare the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God can be compared to the smallest seed that Baptism is the divine seed or divine life in us. But this seed is handled to the gardener, to the mother of the soul, to the, to the mother, sorry, of the, of, yeah, of the soul, which is still ourselves. You are the gardener. God is the gardener, but you are the gardener as well. You provide, you, you, you take care of the soil and of the seed. So the seed is handled to us, handled on to us, and is, a, is supposed to grow. So from the form of a seed here, let me put it uh, in green if you want. It's supposed to reach somewhere here on this line, the form of a full-grown tree capable now of giving fruits. So let us say that the union with Jesus that we were talking about before in this page here, we said let us summarize all this by union with God, union with the Trinity or if you prefer union with Christ. So let us consider that the maturity of the tree is the union with Jesus. So I, will, I put here union with Jesus. Okay? So this is a phase. In the life of a tree, it's a stage. The tree doesn't start immediately. 
to give fruits. It has to reach a certain height, a certain maturity to start to bear fruits. And Jesus chose the, the, the comparison, the image of a seed and, and the growth of the seed until it reaches a, a, the form of a mature tree to describe our Christian life, to describe the growth of the seed of baptism. So in the beginning it is very um, vulnerable. But then it reaches a, a, the f a fullness. So if we say that the maturity of the tree is the union with, with Jesus, this is the beginning of the question. If we say that, if we say, and this is the explanation of this line, that this starting point here is baptism, or more precisely, please listen, listen carefully, the acknowledgement of our baptism, like becoming aware, taking the responsibility, starting to be a gardener. So, let us put awareness of Jesus' call. Let me put it this way. Jesus call. So Jesus is calling me and I become aware of that call. When I become aware of that call, it's this point. So there is a lot of life before. You agree with me? It could be 50 years before of normal life. Quote, unquote, normal life. Then suddenly, I heard the voice of Jesus. I became aware that Jesus is calling me, knocking at the door of my heart and saying, please, I need your attention here. Please, wake up. I want you here with me. You see? So this is this point. So I'm taking on board the responsibility of the seed of baptism, and then there is growth. Until I reach, at a certain point, maturity, and as well, one day, one day we will all die. We will all move on to a, a, a further stage. So this would be the Christian death. Christian death. So my question to you is the following. If this is the beginning of the awareness of Jesus' call, by the grace of God, of course, without the grace of God, nothing of what we are saying would happen, would exist. We will see that later, in the second part of the course. The Holy Spirit, the grace of God, how he works, etc. It's wonderful, no? Without the noise of the children, the room becomes uh, <laughs> holy. The rooms become holy. Now, the end of the story is when we die, hopefully, having reached the fullness, the full, as you said, the full, uh, how what was it? The full trans, yeah, the perfect, the perfect version, yeah, or the fulfillment, or, or the realization of our being. So hopefully we reach full maturity. So my question now, this is, the, this is the, 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 the background of the question, now the question, the second question. This stage of maturity, when the tree will be able to bear fruits, these are the fruits, by the way. Where would you put it on this line? of growth. Let me reword my question with a very easy uh, image, uh, easy understandable, easily understandable image, which is the human being. When is he or she capable of having enough maturity to start a family? You don't start a family at 11 with all the good will of the world, even if you have uh, your sexual uh, maturity, uh, I don't know at which age, you don't start a family immediately. You don't have the psychological maturity to 
have the responsibility, even though many countries, in many countries, uh, still, till now, uh, girls could, could marry very early. But, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have all the full maturity. So, the question is, where do you put that maturity that would allow you, in, in, the, in human life, to start a family? To have the responsibility, to carry on the responsibility of, of a family. Mm? So, that, so this is, on a human level, the equivalent of my question. My question is, when would, where would you place here the maturity of the growth of Jesus in you and your union with him? Where would you put in plain th spiritual theology expression or myst mysticism expression, where would you put union with Jesus? Would you put it here, 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 or here? So let me put the dots. So would you put it here, 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 or here? That fullness, that goal. We, we set up a goal, but I want to clarify. Is this goal achievable now? or after death. If it is achievable now, where would you put it? On the journey of growth. How do you measure it? Your ruler. Describe me your ruler. Uh, and sorry, and just uh, one last word after uh, listening to you. Remember, this line is the line of spiritual age. Not human age, the natural age of us. So, remember, that line is line of growth, of spiritual growth. I could be eight years old and still be here. I could have started my spiritual life and then going in circles here. It's possible. You can start, I can start my spiritual life and then go in circles here for the rest of my life and never progress, thinking that this is it. Okay? So, my question is this one. Where would you put the union with Jesus? We talked about union with Jesus, union with the Trinity. Uh, some of you put it and in the final point. You said to die. Uh, some of you spoke about heaven and eternal life. So, you are already thinking, I, I will reach fullness when I die. So, I would like to see your answers. It's a double question if you want. First, do you achieve it here or, or after death? Second, if it's here, when? Say again? In the beginning? Are you already, are we here totally united and totally pure? So there is no journey for you. <laughs> Some of you already agreed and warned me, insisted, saying, but there is a journey. I said, yeah, 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 we will talk about the journey. Now we are starting to talk about the journey. So this means, in, in your answer, if you say right from the beginning, that was your answer, right from the beginning, which means the becoming aware of Jesus' call, right from the beginning, we, um, we, we have the union with Christ, and therefore, conclusion, there is no journey. I have it already. It's yes and no, because if you look at the tree, in the beginning is a seed, but if you look scientifically to the seed, what will you say? The entire tree is in the seed, yes or not? Like if you see the human being in the womb of his mother, uh, you can say that this is me, but uh, going back, back uh, in time uh, when uh, the two met. So yes, the entire being is there. I buy that. But I'm talking about maturity of that. You see? So, when? Yes? Could it be anywhere, really, but just depending on the person? I, I, yes. Could it be anywhere, but just depending on the person? Now, my question is very, very tricky. And is purely technical. That's, I have to confess. I, I, will, I, will, I have to, just a moment, I have to confess. Because, because my question, in fact, is to set up the ruler. You use inches or centimeters or whatever. And you measure distances with that ruler. 
My question is very tricky, very, very strange, very unusual, because I am handling you the decision of setting the ruler. But in fact, there is a ruler. The ruler exists before you and me. And even my answer to where this maturity is would look as a theoretical answer, but it's not. My answer would be, well, we will see, well, it's very odd, it's very strange, but it, it's, it's, as, it's symbolic and real in the same time. So, you, you can't say a human being becomes mature at 11 or 14 or 16 or 17 or 18 or 19 or 26 or 36. There is, body-wise and psychology-wise, there is a development. The teenager has a certain psychology, has a certain way of, 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 of behavior, psychologically. Uh, in the school you see the difference, each age is different, so you can't say it depends. It depends but only to a certain extent, just a moment, it depends only to, to a certain extent. But you still say that hopefully, I don't know, when they will be 21 or, or 26, they'll have a greater maturity. You see, but you can't say that about nine, the age of nine or the age of 13. So it depends, yes, maybe you meant something different. Maybe you meant it depends like the commitment. Well, yes, it depends, but ideally, so, sorry, yeah, maybe maybe ideally. Maybe year old no. would reach that point yeah. because he or she yeah. It is true, it is true, it is true. But you are looking at age here. My question here is not age, it's transformation. So let me put it in a, add, add one word. Ideally, what would be the perfect drawing of growth? Why I'm saying all this? Let me, let me just uh, explain a little bit. Because if you put it here, then your train will reach it after your death. If you put it here, it means you have something after it. If you put it here, it means you have all this after it. When you marry, you do not die, hopefully. <laughs> you start a new life. Your life before and your life after are quite different. You see what I'm trying to say? So when do you marry? At 60? At 80? At 12? Or I don't know, of course, uh, there are no rules, uh, but uh, usually uh, toward the end of the 20s, in the midst of the 30s, today it's very late, so say in the, in the 30s, in general, no, there are exceptions, very early or very late. So if you're saying that that's not a chronological line... Yeah, it's not a chronological line, what absolutely. What does Christian death mean then? Is that age there? Fullness, another fullness, a further fullness. Thank you for your question. So what does Christian death mean in this case? It's when the tree finished to give all the fruits uh, the tree could give, then you die. You reach a second fullness. Uh, your question is, is very shrewd because in fact you are triggering a further question, which is, do we have one goal or, or two goals? Just a moment. So the first goal would be the union, and the furthest goal would be the fullness of the fruits that this union is bringing. We are, we are already crossing two questions here, mm? uh, but I'm fine with that, I'm fine with that, okay? You got, you got the point? So, on that note, if you allow me, we will have, well, I have to break from time to time, so we will take five minutes of, of break and then keep your answers and your questions in your mind, write them down and then we will fire back again. Thank you. <laughs>